it's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So this video is now part two of the $5 mechanical keyboard I bought off Facebook Marketplace. So if you haven't seen part one, please check it out. There'll be a little linky thingy there and you can see what's going on. But for a very quick recap, I found a listing locally on Facebook for a $5 mechanical keyboard. It said it had some malfunctioning keys. I brought it home, I tested it out on the actual video because I hadn't actually checked it out before and took it apart to discover that the matrix on it was completely unexpected. It was completely whack. So I said in the end of the first part that I would spend some time and actually map out the matrix to see what was going on and this is what we're going to be talking about in this video. So here is the actual keyboard itself uh, still stripped down. Um, I've actually got that backspace upside down. Just realized. <laughs> so I've taken it apart uh, in that last video and I started using my multimeter to try and map out the matrix. I was measuring from the ends of the diodes to diodes as well as pins to pins for rows and columns. I did this on a Friday night while I was playing uh, my weekly session of Dungeons and Dragons using Roll20 with my friends. So in between it was actually my character's turn. I was just going through the pins and typing them out in Excel. Three and a half hours later, I ended up with a matrix. So the matrix looks kind of like this. The diode grid, so I'm going for rows against the rows, it looks a bit wacky. And that's just a, a little count there to make sure I've got all of the actual keys that I'm kind of expecting there. Um, there might be a little bit of duplication, but I think that should be very similar to, to being correct. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you a graphics that will make it a little bit clearer. And then I went and repeated that for columns and the columns run this way. And you'll see there are some oddities because there are some single key columns and there are some single key rows. Well, there's only one single key row, which is this one here on the function and on the columns though, but we've got three and four, which are just single columns. F5 is a single column. Uh, left win key is a single column. So it's all a little bit strange. Now that count is actually correct because it should be 87, but I think there's some duplicates here, uh, but they actually end up turning up in the same row, as in I've got some, some rows going on here that don't fully make sense right now. So I went ahead and I colorized it in to a image like this. And this is, um, <laughs> This is what they've gone and done. It's an absolute mess. It's an absolute mess. And for anybody who's actually trying to convert this, for example, to a QMK, well, I've got this available if you want to go ahead and try and map the actual columns as well to a column and row assignment. But I've kind of done some of the grunt work. But it's a little bit weird because there's sections, for example, here the 7890 and then the OIU, it's almost like it's a duplex that's happened here, but there's like a cluster where all of these diodes are connected. And then you've got all of this, which all of these diodes are connected as well. But when you look at the column, it actually does work and they do have a NKRO situation because one, two, three, four, five, they all have a different column. Tab, the Q, W, E, R, they're all different columns. Caps lock, well, caps lock is, is out of the equation, but A, S, D, Z, X, C. All of them are different columns. So I don't know if this is just simply a matter of that they did some kind of auto routing and they set up some kind of predefined rules on how the matrix needed to be and they just let software do it, 
or if it was a PCB designer who wasn't a keyboard person and was just like, well, here's the constraints that every uh, key switch needs its own unique ID against two variables, the diode, which is the row and the column, and I'll just do whatever the heck I want, which is what it's really turned out to be. It's all over the shop. But logically speaking, when you do the two, uh, the diodes and the connections for the columns, it works. It works. So this is a really great example that if you ever wanted to just randomly create a matrix, you can do it. But it really stuffs up people if they're trying to repair or fix um, or backwards engineer your your physical hardware components. Now, I don't know how many people are interested in trying to backwards engineer a uh, Thermaltake Poseidon to be a QMK compatible, but if they were, this is the kind of fun games that they would actually experience. The other thing is, it's an efficiency thing, because you've got nine rows where it could have just been one, two, three, four, five, six rows, and you've got 20 columns when it could have just been 17 columns. So in a way, they've actually added extra pins which were completely unnecessary. But the controller that they've chosen to go for supports that many pins, so why not? So I spent a bit of time doing that, um, and what struck me after I did it was the fact that originally I thought the win key and the B key weren't working. Um, and also the fact that there was a function key there that wasn't showing up on switch hitter. But when I mapped it out, there's no issue with the traces. There's no issues with them whatsoever. The actual matrix is preserved. So I went back into switch hitter and I started spamming the keys and the B key actually works. The B key, however, is a bit bodgy. So I'm just going to go back to switch hitter. Let's flip this over again. Let's plug that in. Okay, so you can see that it's I'm, I'm pressing this quite regularly and sometimes it's triggering, sometimes it's not. So it's intermittent and I suspect that it's not likely to be a bad switch, although if the leaf has corrosion on it, you could probably, you know, clean that up and, and fix that. It's possibly a bad solder joint there. The other keys around it, you know, seem to be working perfectly fine, and if keycaps were on it, it's quite unlikely that there would be any issues to why there would be a spill that got inside just one switch and causes it to bug out, because you can see how it's sometimes working, sometimes not working. There is a gamer key which is in the scroll lock position and people commented about that. So that's the disable windows key up here in this gamer position and that actually turns the left win key into a control. So I just press that gamer key and the win key is back and working perfectly fine. Whereas if I press that gamer key now it activates as a control rather than a win key. So that one's fixed. Function key won't show up in switch, key, uh, in switch header, but what you can do with function key is you can change the lighting modes. There you go. And well, you know it works because it's working on the lighting. But what I did discover when I went back, uh, sorry about that. Um, was the F11 key itself, which is the lighting control key, is also a bit podgy. So, it's a bit hard trying to juggle these monitor things, but so I'm pressing it, I'm spamming it right now, and it's, um, It's intermittently as well. It's it's working sometimes and it's not working other times. So a couple of bad switches there, which at least from a matrix point of view is not 
related to the matrix. Uh, am I going to do a third part on this video? I'm going to say most likely not. The solution that I'm going to impart on this PCB now is fairly straightforward and it's not really worthwhile trying to do another part on this. What that's going to be is I'm just going to reflow those two switches. I'm going to reflow them and add some leaded solder and see if that'll fix that. If it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, then I'll just desolder the switch. I'll crack it open, have a look and see if there's any issues with the switch. And if necessary, I can just put in some replacement cherry MX Blues, generics, Gatorons, whatever I've got in my drawer and put them back in and see if that fixes it. I can't imagine that there's any issues on the actual microcontroller because from a matrix perspective, the other switches in that matrix row and column position don't seem to have a problem. So it must be isolated to either the pads, the solder or the switch itself, which by reflowing or removing and replacing that should take care of that problem. So there you go. That's uh, effectively what's happened with this five. Oh, I keep hitting the space bar, which in um, OBS is select or deselect on the source. <laughs> really apologize for that. And so the B key, you know, it looks okay. Like there's nothing glaringly obviously wrong on that. Um, and F11, similarly. So, you know, there's no reason for me to believe that it was a terrible job from the probably soldering machine or whatever it was they used. They're very consistent, so not likely a human actually soldered them. But I'll give them a reflow. We'll see what happens there. And I guess if something goes dramatically wrong, then you might see a part three. Otherwise, I think that was a, a pretty good investment for $5 on the actual keyboard itself. Uh, from a what am I going to do with this keyboard now perspective? Well, I don't know. I might uh, have a play around with the case or something. If the switches are all working well and good, I might do something with the keycaps, pimp them up, I don't know, get a rattle can and spray them, put it back together and use it as a giveaway. Who knows? We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But that's it. Three and a bit hours to map out a really wacky matrix. If you're interested in trying to backwards engineer one of these and you see this video and you want the data that I've got, then please, of course, let me know. And if I've still got it and I haven't deleted it, then I'm more than happy to send it off to you to play with as well. Right, that's a wrap. Thanks very much for checking out this video. And of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.